What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing another install video, um, again on the 2014 Toyota Tundra. Um, we've got a lot of good things to put in. Uh, we're going to be throwing grow lights in, PA system, as well as lights in the back uh, columns of the truck. Um, so we have lights in the front and the back. Um, I'm going to run through real fast a little unboxing of what we have to put in. Um, so this is all Phoenix stuff. Uh, I think they make really good products. Um, this is the Phoenix Typhoon. It's got a PA system built in, so that's what we're going to be using it. This is the main control module, and we're going to have to find somewhere to mount this inside. I've actually already started messing around inside, and I think I have a pretty good spot to put it. Um, and then this is the handheld model, so it comes with a handheld. These are switches for lights and stuff like that. That's where we're going to wire the grill lights and the back lights to. Um, and then with that, you're going to obviously need a speaker of some sorts. So this is a 100 watt speaker that's capable of doing uh, PA and stuff like that. Um, and then these are the lights that we're going to be putting into this. Um, these are the Phoenix Fusion uh, surface mount lights. Uh, they can be used for a whole host of things. Uh, these are dual color, blue and white. They have... Uh, Pretty much in many ways the same. Phoenix keeps a lot of their products uh, following like the same sort of wiring diagram, if you want to call it that. Um, so you've got your main uh, power and ground, and then because these are dual color, what's nice about the Fusion line, and even if you have single color, I believe this is true, they come with uh, two functions essentially. Um, so we'll be able to have two different patterns. So what I have on my truck is I have one is a flash pattern and the second is a steady on white um, sort of work light, which is actually really useful. So we're going to be wiring these up in the grill. Uh, I haven't actually taken the grill off and looked at how we're going to be attaching them. So that should be interesting, but I have some L brackets for these as well. And I believe that's what we're going to be able to do. Hopefully um, it'll make life a lot easier if we can do it that way. But I will try and make sure I go really in depth on the wiring in this video. If you know that type of stuff, feel free to skip around. Um, but pretty much that's what we're going to be running through today. Hopefully it won't take us too long and we don't hit too many setbacks. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to get the grill lights set up. So in order to take your grill off to work on them uh, on the Tundra, there are four bolts that I believe are 10 millimeters, if I recall correctly. And then there's these two push pins. So you have to take these out with a flathead screwdriver if you have some sort of trim removal tool that'll work perfectly um, and then there's four bolts here so what you do is you unbolt those grab the grill and give it a good little tug there's a few clips down at the bottom um, if you've never taken your grill off before it might be pretty stiff but if you have then you already know how to do this so we're going to take care of that and then i will start working on the wiring and seeing how we're going to attach those so right now, um, we're currently working on sort of mocking up where I want to put the lights. And I think this is actually really important to do um, instead of just putting them on there. And I mean, if you want to, I guess you can make screw holes all over the place. But what I like to do um, is if you can see up here, I just use painters tape, electrical tape, anything you can do to kind of fix these into place so that you can set it on the truck and see and make sure that you're happy with how they look. So as you guys can see, this one is now mounted in place, it's screwed in place. Um, and what I did to screw it in place was I drilled two pilot holes and then I used these screws that I picked up just from Home Depot. Um, they're relatively flat headed so that they are as flush as possible. Um, normally I'd try to have nothing showing, but in this case it's pretty difficult. But really the only way you're gonna see those screws is if you were to go and look upwards on the grill and any normal standing human won't actually see them. Now for the other side, uh, this just goes to show that never, nothing ever goes easily. Um, this bracket from the get-go would not actually work because this is in a different location than this. And I don't know if that's true for all Tundras, but you'll run into things like this when you're doing projects. Um, so this bracket just, it wouldn't fit correctly. So what I ended up having to do was I had to cut it down and I used a little black rustoleum sprayed it on to cover up all the cut edges so that it won't rust. Um, now something else to mention before you want to go installing the rest of these that I think is good to do is if you have a bench grinder or some type of grinder, I like doing it, you don't have to, but cut off the ends of these nails because they are screws because they are kind of sharp and if you didn't know these were back here, you forget or something, you could cut your hand rather easily. I didn't do it on that one yet, but I'm going to. 
I'm just gonna grind them off real fast. For the remainder of these, I'm gonna grind them off before I put it in, because it'll be easier. Um, but that's just something to do to clean it up, and I think it makes your work look a little more professional when you don't have these screws hanging off the back. So we have got everything secured in place now. Um, it's all tight, looks good. All right, double check the front. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four set up. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is because there's only four, when I wire it, I'm gonna set um, one of the corners, the opposite corners basically to be on the same so that it will alternate because this is blue and white. So when this and this are blue, that and that will be white essentially. Um, and that's fairly easy to do when you're connecting them. You just set them to primary or secondary mode and I'll run through that here in a minute when I start um, wiring them together. But what we're gonna do is we'll make all the wires so that you can't see them from the front. So as you can see, like this part would be blocked, down here would be blocked. So we'll probably have wires running there, running there, and then depending on what side I end up running up and through the firewall on the truck on will depend what side I have it come out on because we wire this all into one big strand basically of just uh, four wires which makes it a lot easier than all of these. So that's basically how I connected everything um, and like I said now I'm going to move on to the wiring. So as you can see we have started to solder our connections. I actually do not have any heat shrink, so I just ordered a ton of it from Amazon. Um, I'll drop links in the description to the heat shrink uh, as well as there's a few other things that I've been using to make life a lot easier. I actually picked this up today. It's a Milwaukee cordless soldering iron. If you do a lot of soldering, that is awesome, especially automotive. Um, it's way easier. You don't have to have cords running all over the place. It heats up to 750 degrees in about 18 seconds, the packaging claimed. Um, I've been using it no problems. I turn it on and off. Um, it's got an indicator light, which is really nice too. It tells you when it's at the right temperature. And right now, as you can see, it's red. It's just warning me that it's still hot and it's off. Um, and then another thing I really like to use is these are Irwin Vice Grip. They're Irwin brand. Um, it says Vice Grip, but they're wire strippers. They're like quick wire strippers, they make your life so much easier um, if you're constantly doing a lot of wiring like we're gonna be doing here. Because I've gotta snake this wire over here. I'm gonna probably drill little holes and then use very fine wire that I have to just tie this up against the side here. Um, what I usually do is once I have these heat shrunk, I just put electric tape on this. If you wanted to, you could use a much harder, um, like outside of protecting, like a, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a, plastic sheathing i guess you would call it and you could snake it all around with that um i don't really see any need to because the wire is insulated and once you heat shrink that should be safe um also the electric tape probably does a better job protecting it from the elements than that sheathing does because that sheathing has a slit all the way up the middle so you can actually put the wire in it so it doesn't really protect it more protects it from other things other than the elements um i probably will double up once we get down to that end and we head through the firewall, I'll do the electric tape and the sheathing because we're going to be running all over by the engine. Um, but basically what we're going to do is run this down here and we're trying to do this in as few amount of connections as possible. So I'm going to basically splice this into here. This will continue on down to the other side where we're going to have these two. Um, what I'll probably do is a small run down to here um, and then we'll extend probably from this one all the way out, a very long run from here all the way out. And we'll just attach that to there and then this guy into that at some point as well. And we'll try and do this, like I said, in as few amount of connections as possible. Then from there, it's gonna be getting the wires into the cab um, as well as we have to start working on the speaker for the PA system. So I'm gonna keep going on this. I'll show you once I get a little bit further where we're at um, and then we're gonna go over before I finish permanently soldering wires together, what we want to do is we want to test everything and make sure that the primary and secondary modes are working because if you solder everything together and you've accidentally misset or forgotten to set or something just didn't go right with these and you've connected everything and the primary and secondary is working, you're going to be really frustrated because you're going to have to cut a lot of stuff and reconnect it all. It's going to be a whole big mess. So before you solder everything permanently, it's really good to just temporarily test things. You can really easily run this all 
off of a little like nine volt battery these lights light up super easily i'll show you right now basically if you wanted to test one all you've got to do is you take red you take your positive and your ground and touch them to the battery and if you look down hopefully you guys can see the floor um this light will start going so that's a really easy way to test all these this will power all four so we can make sure that everything is alternating correctly flash pattern set that way by the time we put it on the truck everything is good to go so like i said i'm going to keep working on this and once i get a little bit further i will show you guys how i've snaked the wires around and then we'll start to tape everything up all right so real quick here is a little bit of an update as i'm going along um, you can see this wire is snaked over here. These have been successfully um, split, spliced in to the wires that I'm going to extend. And then I'm basically following the same process on the right side. Um, we've got this wire extended. I haven't spliced these in yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all these a little bit, shorten this up, connect this to here, and then while we're doing that we're going to run a really long run ahead which will be the wires that run to the cab so the next time you guys see this everything will be taped up and i will have um, four wires running away which will be going up into the cab um, but like always kind of important a little tip um, make sure that you keep in track of what wires you have inside of the inside of your tape or whatever because it's hard to see so what I like to do is if you've got electric tape or some sort of method, Sharpies, anything you can think of, just so you remember what wire is what, and you don't have to go messing with it to figure out which one it is. So as you guys can see, this is all complete now. Um, I've electric taped everything. I used wire and a small drill bit to drill tiny holes all over. You um, can't really see them, and you won't see them when you're looking through the front of the grill, and that's just so that I could tuck the wire out of line of sight. And before you do this, it's kind of important to make sure that when you actually put this on the truck that somewhere you've ran the wire, it's not going to be pinched. Um, I already checked that, but just something to keep in the back of mind. And then as we got over here, I'm going to run my wires up the passenger side of the truck, so everything is going to shoot out the passenger side of the grill. And once I get this on and in position, I'll electric tape the rest of this, and then I'll use wire sheathing. So now I'm going to transition to working on the PA system. I need to extend the wires on it as well as drill holes um, in somewhere on the front of the truck, basically. I haven't exactly figured it out yet. It's probably going to be this front bar that actually is what these clip into um, for the grill. And I need to drill three or four holes, use some bolts, get that bolted in place. And then I will run the wires from that with the wires from this because they're all going in the same place. There's two wires that come from that, and there's two wires that come from this that are going to be going into the cab. The other two wires from this, one of them is the pattern synchronization wire. So that doesn't need to go anywhere. What I like to do is put a quick connect on the end of that, just in case you do want to change the patterns. Just hook it up and ground it to something while the power is on to the, uh, to the lights. And then the other wire is the actual ground, so we'll ground that. So we're going to work on that, and then this is all starting to come together. And then we're going to have to transition to the inside of the truck where I have to mount the unit, which I believe I found a pretty good spot for it. I've taken off a good amount of the dash and the glove box on the passenger side already, and I'll make sure I show you guys how I put that on back together because I didn't take a video of it when I was disassembling it. But I'm going to tuck the unit up under the passenger side, but it's still going to be relatively accessible, um, and I'll probably just zip tie it in place. So I'll get working on the rest of this, and then as we keep going, I'll video some more parts of this. Here we have the speaker installed. It's installed in this sort of uh, metal piece of uh, support beam almost. It holds the, it helps hold the grill in place. It's not super heavy duty, like there is a little bit of play, but this thing isn't that heavy, um, <clears throat> and I bolted it down really well, so I'm not too worried about it. As you can see here, the wire runs out the side, and I have electric taped a good amount of it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it inside this protective sheathing and I'm going to get the grill in place. And since the grill wires also, I, I wired it up so the grill lights wires come out the right side. So they'll pop out actually right about here and it'll be perfect. We'll be able to put that sheathing around both. And then we're going to run the wire up through here, um, snake it behind this stuff with some zip ties. It'll look factory. And then there's actually a rubber grommet down back there. It's kind of difficult to see, but there is a rubber grommet and that is where we're going to go in through the firewall into the cab because on the back side of that, 
we have the glove box area and that's where the um, fan blower is as well as to the right of that there's a free space which is where I'm going to be putting that control box because um, that needs to be dry. So I'm going to work on that. The next thing you guys will get to see is probably the grill on. I'll show you with lights um, how I usually get through the firewall which is typically I use a coat hanger. Um, I don't know it just seems to work really well. And then basically we're going to move inside the cab for the rest of the wiring. I already have um, some extra power and ground wires that I snake through the other side. Um, so I don't have to worry about running an additional power and ground to power the box. But if you hadn't done that, um, you'd need to snake an additional two wires. So there'd be a total f for you. There'd be six wires going through. You'd have a power ground, two from the speaker and two from the lights but I'm only gonna be having four go through. If you wanted to, I suppose you could do a fuse tap inside the car. Um, this, the power box, the control box, whatever you wanna call it, is rated for 30 amps, so that is like a good amount to be pulling out of a fuse tap, and I don't really know if you wanna do that. I personally wouldn't do it, um, since I don't know that much about it, but the only things I have fuse tapped are relatively uh, low amperage. But I'm gonna wrap this up, and then we'll move inside the car so I can show you how you go about wiring up the control box. It's actually really simple to do. All right, so we have the grill back installed. Um, all the wires are run up along the side here. If you guys can see, it's in that sheathing. And then there's a grommet way back there, which is where the wires go through. And I have got them out and into the cab. I always give myself a lot of extra wire um, because you can cut it at the end and save it for other projects. And the grommet is up here, basically. So. What we have is the two um, from the lights and then the two from the PA system. And then now what I'm going to be doing is the box actually fits perfectly up in this space here. So I'm going to mount it on this plate. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's not actually going to be mounted to it. I'm not going to drill or anything like that. I'm just going to use zip ties to secure it to stuff back here. Um, I'm going to run the power and ground from the driver's side back there. And then I'm going to tie this all up and pretty shortly everything should be working so once i have the box in place um relatively i'll show you guys how you put the wires into the box and we'll go from there so before i tuck this all up in here basically i want to show you guys how all the wires go into this um, hopefully this will focus the two speaker wires go down at the very end these are all labeled there's just a phillips or a flathead basically and these are your two main powers for the whole unit as well as these switches are able to send power. So this uh, this unit is powering the grill lights. Um, that's basically all it is. And then this black wire is what actually connects to the handheld controller that lights up red when you power it up. So I'm gonna get this all tucked up. Um, I will show you guys what that looks like once it's all put away. I have plenty of extra wire, as you can see, like I said earlier, I'd rather have extra um, than be too short and you're kind of screwed then. Um, so I will either cut this or I might just tuck it all back here. I'm kind of undecided. I guess I'll see how it goes as we're working with it. Um, but for the most part, everything is pretty much done except tying this up here and putting the dash back on and then we're good to go. All right, so it turns out it was actually pretty difficult um, trying to film this while putting it back together. But what I will do is I can explain how I took it apart. So this is a 20... Uh, 14 Toyota Tundra. So the first thing you'd need to do to remove the passenger side, like uh, glove box, etc., cetera, area, um, is you need to pull this up. It's just held in this little floorboard runner. Um, it's held in just by these like little clip, not even things. So yank it from the back and yank forward. So that'll take that off. Next thing you need to take off is you need to take off this like rocker panel kick plate type deal there's one um, little bolt head down here and it's a 10 millimeter so you need to take that off then this whole section will be exposed once you have that exposed behind this you'll find another 10 millimeter bolt black bolt you need to take it out there and then there's a bolt over here that you need to take out as well um, all of the bolt heads are either 10 millimeters or Phillips so once you take that out you'll have all of this off. So then you have to remove the airbag. There's three 10 millimeter bolts, again, to remove the airbag, and then just be very careful when you're handling the airbag. You have to disconnect the wires to the airbag. 
after you've got that done, you're gonna go actually inside your glove box where you'll find one, two, three um, Phillips head screws that you have to take out. Um, as well as I wanna say there was one more down here um, and it was hidden behind all this plastic. Um, and then you kinda just have to give it a good little tug and the whole thing should come off. Um, you also have to take off this side plastic uh, trim covering piece uh, and then that will reveal everything you need to get at. It'll give you a lot of space to work. It'll make it really easy to get through the grommet into the engine bay. If you don't do that, it, I just don't see how you could possibly uh, get everything you need. And if you look, I'm not sure if the camera will even pick it up. Oh yeah, well, you can see all my wiring is tucked up um, here. I'll try and get this leveled out for you guys. We've got basically the box up there. You can barely see it. Um, and all the wiring from the stuff down there. So, either way, I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm gonna show um, what the light pattern I'm set it to looks like. Um, this, there's two patterns. I set one as just the basic pattern and the other is a steady on white. Um, it's nothing fancy. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to comment. I'll try my best to respond. Um, this was definitely a little bit more difficult uh, than your average install because of just things like the complicated wiring and such. But uh, if you're a little bit handy and adventurous and willing to make a few mistakes, you can definitely accomplish this on your own. So thanks for watching.